The person filming this tape is Greg Favalora, one of the founders of Actuality Systems, and I'll start by taking you on a brief walk brief walkthrough of our display unit. Um, this is a picture of the display. What you're looking at from far away is an image that is approximately two inches by three inches by two inches. And this is one of our calibration images, which is a parametric spiral. On the right, then, you see the lasers, which are illuminating a path in the air. They strike that rotating polygonal mirror, which sweeps the linear array out into a plane through a simple lens and into our display volume. I'll now walk slowly around the volume so you can see that the imagery is indeed visible from nearly any angle. The flicker, if any, is due to the recording speed of the video camera and not of the display itself, which is currently updated approximately 20 hertz. This is an image of an alias wavefront file of a Hughes helicopter. We've written uh, an alpha version of an API which allows us to very easily rotate and scale the imagery. So Dennis, could you please uh, scale the image up and down to increase its size? So now it's getting smaller, now it's getting bigger. Make it as big as possible. Now decrease it so it fits on the screen. You'll notice it gets clipped as it moves out of the viewing realm. And now, Dennis, if you could in real time rotate the image using the X, Y, and Z rotation sliders. So now he could rotate it about all three axes. Now we'll show you a picture of very simple, real-time animated double helix. There is a television crew who recently was interested in the display, so we made this imagery for them. And uh, being computed in real time is simply the vertices you see here. Again, this imagery is 64 by 64 by 64 voxels, all of which are coming out of a double-buffered RAM system uh, connected via an ISA card to an off-the-shelf PC clone, uh, running our proprietary software and fast rendering algorithms. The product which we have in the works will be extremely high resolution compared to this, of approximately 680, 640, excuse me, by 480, by approximately 200 slices through the voxel space. I'd like to show you some Wizard of Oz uh, prototypes that we did for exploring input and interaction styles for volumetric displays. Now, we varied uh, sizes and shapes to explore different interaction paradigms, starting from sort of a hand scale to a much uh, larger one, which is more a desktop scale, and even a larger one here, which is about a four foot size scale. Now, also varying the size and the shape, we also varied the content. We started looking at things like uh, the skull for medical applications. We looked here for uh, animations. Here is one for more consumer products. And this last one is uh, automotive context. And so uh, we realized that a scale of about two to two and a half feet is probably a nice desktop size scale. And so when we started building this one, we realized that the affordances of this display make it so that you want to really rotate the uh, scene and so we actually built the prototype so that it rotates quite easily, so that you can actually work around the scene quite quickly. The other thing we found was that you want to actually operate on the surface itself. And so we could imagine here a touch screen where you're able to um, select objects and move things around just using your fingers, as well as input devices, such as things like a mouse that can be tracked on the surface. Here we see that something like our rocking mouse, which senses movement and tilt. Or you can imagine like a laser pointer where you're able to point to objects in the scene. So after looking here, um, we also explored things like an animation context where uh, you're able to move things around and, and get a smaller scale, and as well as looked at things like a cube shape. Now in here, it's kind of interesting in that the cube allows for different affordances, such as having 2D work surfaces. So, in this surface, you're able to actually 
draw on it and have a sort of 2D to 3D integration. And so when I'm working here, I can operate it and that gets translated into the 3D scene. Now the last thing we want to look at is this larger scale, which is about a four foot size. And this allows for multiple people to be looking and operating on it and sort of walk around the display as well as move it so that you can, you can uh, vary the content and get sort of an overall look into the, uh, into the scene. Now we started exploring how one would interact in here using graphical widgets. And so here you can see a set of control panels, buttons and sliders, which actually live on the shell of the display. And you can operate them and hit various buttons and they operate onto the 3D objects, as well as explore objects within the scene that can be serving as widgets. And so all of these shapes and sizes and contents serve as tools for thought for exploring input and interaction styles for volumetric displays.